被开会，好冇 ？Time is up, and also we are forming formative quorum. So let's call the meeting to order. Item one on the agenda: confirmation of minutes and designation to the minutes of the meeting held on the 16th of October 2012. We have already sent out a copy of the draft minutes. No proposals to amend have been received, so can we confirm the minutes? Thank you. Item two: information paper issued since the last meeting. We have got a note from the administration, which is about the financial position of the Applied Research Fund for the period 1st of December 2011 to 29th of February 2012. So please refer to paper CB bracket 1123-12-13 bracket 01. Questions from members, if any? No. Date of the next meeting and items for discussion. Um, we are going to hold our meeting on the 18th of December 2012, Tuesday in the afternoon at 2.30. We would like to talk about the research and development of Chinese medicines and proposed adjustments to the fees under the jurisdiction of the Trade and Industry Department. When will it be held? The 18th of December at 2.30 p.m. Well, for the item concerning Chinese medicines, yes, that's about the one involving the jockey club. I just want to say that there's something wrong with the microphone today. So, members, if you want to speak, please press the button request to speak. Um, when the red light is on, then the green Light next to it will be on, and then your mic will be on. And after you finish, please uh, press the red button. Ms. Emily Lau, uh, will the, uh, can we use the voting system? No. Uh, Emily, would you try to press the request to speak button? Yes, I press it. Can you hear me? Yes. But in fact, I can hear you if you speak loudly. Item Four on the agenda. Report on the work of the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Offices, the Hong Kong Economic Trade and Cultural Office Taiwan, and the Office of the Government of the Hong Kong SAR in Beijing in the year 2011 to 2012. Uh, let's invite the officials to join us. Mr. Chairman, do we intend to ask them to speak one by one? Probably um, we would be finished by then. I'll, I'll invite some of the more important ones to speak. Uh, who among them is not important? You are going to make it divisive. It's up to the PS to make a choice, but he will not exercise the choice because everyone will be regarded as important. Um, if we put questions to them one by one, um, do you want to stay here until 8? So he wants to have filibustering, Mr. Chairman. We can have three sessions. Jeffy, if you want to do it, since you have said so, uh, make sure you stay. We would like to welcome Mr. Andrew Wong, Permanent Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Ms. Carol Yun, Deputy Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. And also 12 uh, representatives from the economic and trade offices, and also a number of officials who are stationed in the mainland. On behalf of the panel, I would like to extend a welcome to the ladies and gentlemen. I won't introduce you one by one. In fact, we can read the card before your um, before you to understand to know who you are. Usually, we have our uh, briefing from you uh, in summer. Uh, but then on this occasion, the timing is different because uh, we have had a number of general elections in many countries. So maybe the PS can sort of uh, brief us on the changes to the governments in a number of places involved. Sorry, speaker is off mic. You have yet to tell them how to use the buttons. First of all, please read, 
please press the red button, request to speak, and then you press the green light. Um, there's something wrong with the automatic uh, system. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you have said, sir, um, in the past, uh, the directors of the ETOs as well as the various uh, officials stationed in the mainland and the and Taiwan, they used to come back in the middle of the year to give a briefing to you concerning the work of the various officers. Um, Chair, as you have said, uh, uh, there were elections in many countries, and we were also uh, having our own elections in Hong Kong, and therefore we have uh, come in October instead. Uh, so um, the briefing has been deferred until today. So um, all the officials will be briefing you on their work in the past year or so. Uh, economic uncertainties throughout the world uh, have continued, and we haven't seen clear signs of the rebound of the economic situation in the U.S. Uh, there's also a very uh, poor mood in the economy of Europe. And in fact, all the colleagues in the various offices have been watching the developments very closely to see if our economic and trade interests would be affected. They have also been very active in promoting Hong Kong so to attract more investors to come to Hong Kong. Other than the economic and trade work, through a number of activities, our offices have been promoting Hong Kong so as to promote um, the uh, exchanges and links between Hong Kong and a number of places. I remember that uh, at your last meeting, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok did ask this question. That is, he would like to know whether our officers have worked on the cultural front. I just want to say that other than the Geneva office, which mainly represents Hong Kong in our participation of the World Trade Organization, all other officers, including our officers in the mainland and Taiwan, Hey, we have been uh, actively promoting the cultural side of Hong Kong uh, so as to um, sort of show others the artistic aspect of Hong Kong. For the past year or so, the various offices have been hosting or sponsoring dozens of cultural and artistic activities like film uh, festivals, concerts, uh, art exhibitions, among others, and we've also invited uh, representatives from different sectors to join in the activities to celebrate the Hong Kong Design Year in 2012. Um, in New York this year, we have a very uh, special activity and we have invited Hong Kong designers to go to New York to share um, the experience with the cultural sector there. Other offices have also sponsored um, artistic groups to go uh, to their host countries to uh, give performance like the ballet as well, Hong Kong Ballet as well as the Hong Kong Simonetta. And our youth orchestra has also been sponsored um, to tour in Asia. And Berlin office has also hosted and sponsored the Hong Kong Children's Choir in providing a concert, and the Hong Kong Chinese Orchestra has also uh, given a performance. And the Shanghai office has also arranged for the students from the APA to give a performance live at the uh, spring reception uh, so as to uh, showcase our cultural diversity. Our Chengdu office has also um, hosted uh, concerts and we have also had exchanges between uh, Hong Kongers and also the local uh, musicians. Uh, looking ahead, our various offices will continue to uh, get engaged in commerce, uh, commercial pro business promotion uh, activities. We would like to uh, promote Hong Kong's uh, competitiveness, and we will showcase Hong Kong as the financial hub, and we want to attract more businesses and more tourists to come to Hong Kong for business and tourism. And we will would like to enhance the exchanges between Hong Kong and other places. Um, Mr. Chairman, if you agree with me, I would like to invite a number of colleagues to um, uh, explain to you what work they has 
they have carried out. We do have a large number of uh, members on our team. Um, say, for example, a number of officers in the USA. I would like to invite one of them to speak, and then one among the European uh, representatives. First of all, I would like to invite our Geneva uh, office to um, speak uh, because. Um, this is in relation to the uh, work of the WTO, and then I will invite our Washington representative to talk about the case of USA. They will be followed by other officers. Would it be agreeable? Yes, uh, maybe three or four minutes each. Um, the WTO has three main uh, strands of work. The first one is the negotiation of new or amended agreements under the WTO. <coughs> Second is regular business, and the third is the dispute settlement mechanism. On negotiations, uh, we are uh, still in the Doha development uh, round of negotiations, started in 2001. It was a very ambitious round, and unfortunately it's still stalled. Uh, that doesn't mean to say there is nothing happening on it. Uh, with there are elements that we are trying to take forward in advance of concluding the entire negotiations. The main element is to try and draft a new agreement on trade facilitation. This uh, is designed to try and ensure that customs procedures and other matters relating to uh, primarily goods are made as simple and as transparent as possible. Um, the other area where it is necessary to do something is agriculture, because this is a big focus of many countries, and uh, that is very problematic. But uh, the hope is that we'll be able to get a small package in time for the next ministerial conference, which is in early December 2013. Another strand of negotiations is to expand or do another version of the ITA, the innovation, uh, I, IT, <laughs> ITA, uh, not innovation and technology. Um, what is it? Andrew, what's IT? Information technology. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Information technology agreement, uh, which is essentially a, a list where uh, the tariffs are reduced to zero, and we're trying to expand that list. It's a, a plurilateral agreement, which means that not everybody has signed up to it, but it is extended on an MFN basis, a most favored nation basis. Uh, the third strand of negotiations is on something which is provisionally called the International Services Agreement. Uh, that is a plurilateral agreement amongst the willing uh, members. Uh, we are one of them, trying to improve on the services provision set out in the GATS. Um, the intention is that this uh, would be or could be multilateralized, but at the moment uh, not all members are partaking. On regular business, uh, this is a very important function of the WTO. Uh, perhaps not as given as much significance as it should. Uh, basically, this refers to uh, reporting of what members are doing, uh, transparency in all the activities uh, of uh, members underneath the various uh, agreements, and uh, most importantly, monitoring of how members are in fact carrying out their obligations. So this is an important strand that goes on all the time. The third strand is the dispute settlement mechanism. It's often referred to as the jewel in the crown of the WTO. It is a legally binding um, measure to ensure that members keep their obligations under the WTO agreements, and it works very well. Um, on business uh, going forward, I've mentioned that uh, the main event for us coming up is the, the ninth ministerial conference, which will be held in Bali in early December 2013. Uh, there we will try and uh, conclude uh, part of the early package of the Doha development round. Um, the other main issue that is going on for us this year is that uh, we will have to recruit a new Director General of the WTO, and uh, this uh, will happen in September, but the process is beginning essentially now. Thank you. Thank you. Washington, good luck. Um, um, from uh, Washington ETO. Chairman, members, um, as far as the U.S. is concerned, because um, U.S. Uh, we have the uh, uh, U.S. is our second largest uh, trade partner, 
and uh, this is also the uh, single economic entity where we have uh, the largest number of uh, Hong Kong companies. Basically, we work with the uh, federal government and also the think tanks and also the um, the Congress um, in our work and also in San Francisco and also in our New York ETO. Basically, we are responsible for trade and um, uh, economic and also t uh, we are responsible for attracting overseas in investors and we also organize a number of um, arts and cultural activities and uh, for the U.S. Uh, presidential election as you are aware uh, this was um, completed in November and Barack Obama from the, uh, Demo from the Democratic Party was elected and um, in terms of the, con uh, the uh, election in the Congress, well, whether it's um, in the Senate or in the Congress, um, the Republicans have got a, um, a majority, or the, uh, the Democrats have got a re um, well, the Democrats have controlled the um, Senate, and then uh, the Republican has continued to control the Congress, and as a result, how we are able to uh, make sure that uh, with regard to the White House, um, they are able to reach um, um, agreement uh, with the White House. Well, at this very moment, uh, I think um, uh, there is uh, some uncertainty. And also during the last uh, one and a half months or so, well, the Congress and uh, the government will have to resolve a number of um, issues or else uh, with regard to next year and also the economic uh, prospect uh, there will be significant impacts. And one is, uh, is the so-called fiscal uh, cliff and by the end of this year, this must be resolved or else with regard to the US economy there might be a, a very serious negative impact and according to some um, experts if the fis fiscal cliff uh, problem can be resolved then uh, next year the US economy should be able to maintain about a 2-3% to growth with regard to the unemployment rates it can be kept at about 8% but then uh, if the fiscal cliff cannot be overcome within this year then um, uh, there might be negative growth next year, and some even expect um, to have um, a minus negative uh, minus 0.5 percent um, growth. And uh, for an employment rate, uh, it could grow to some nine or even 10 percent, according to uh, to some estimates. And of course, our uh, uh, Chinese Chinese economy has a lot to do with the U.S. economy, and therefore this is something that we will have to watch very closely. And another thing is. Well, even though it might not have to be resolved uh, by the end of this year, but then that will also have to be resolved uh, shortly. That is uh, whether or not we are able to increase the cap for uh, the U.S. Uh, debt. If that's not um, resolved, then uh, there might be difficulty in raising for the debts, and that would also have a negative impact on the global economy. On the other hand, this year, um, up to this very moment, uh, in, uh, well, in the U.S. Uh, economy, there are signs that uh, is turning for the better. And during the first uh, part of the year, uh, at least uh, for the first nine months of the year, in, in terms of the economic growth, is about 1.7 percent, and uh, for the uh, growth for the entire year, uh, we are actually looking at about a uh, two percent growth. And in terms of unemployment rate, what well, is um, now standing at 7.9 percent, and during the past three years or so, uh, is already at the um, low point, and uh, the lowest uh, was uh, 7.8, and therefore 7.9 is already not too bad as far as the U.S. is concerned. And um, for uh, President Obama, Obama yes, uh, he has been able to get a second term, but then there are a number of uh, senior officials uh, who have um, changed, including the uh, Minister of um, uh, Commerce and also the, uh, uh, the State, State Secretary and also um, other secretaries. And therefore, we will have to look at um, the reshuffling in the Cabinet, and uh, we expect that many of them will be able to stay on despite the fact that uh, there has been some changes um, in the phases. But then um, coming back to the financial um, uh, policies, well, you know, the most important thing for the uh, U.S. in the coming year is about uh, the uh, Trans-Pacific Trans Partnership. Um, there are altogether econ uh, 11 economies, and they're going, going to form this um, um, uh, economic uh, pact. And also the U.S. and uh, the EU would also like to come up with a free trade agreement. and. They would also attach importance uh, to promoting export, and there might also be um, anti-dumping and also um, anti-subsidy, and uh, they would also be going to the uh, WTO for um, a settlement or for a ruling. So, so much for my presentation for the time being. All right, um, Linda from our Brussels office, uh, can you tell us more about uh, the situation in um, Europe? 
Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. During the past year or so, actually during the past uh, 12 to 18 months, Hong Kong and uh, the EU's uh, bilateral relationship has been good, and uh, uh, the EU is also one of the most uh, important trade partners for Hong Kong. And uh, during the past year or so, we have had we have seen a double-digit growth uh, in terms of our trade uh, with EU. But then during the uh, last three months, there is um, we have recorded a negative growth. It shows that uh, for EU countries, they are actually um, experiencing a lot of difficulty. And uh, when it comes to the EU, actually we're talking about some 27 countries for Croatia. It's going to be the 28th country of the EU. And this year, actually Croatia has already been um, deemed uh, to be uh, part of the EU. As for its formal um, membership, uh, that would um, uh, commence um, in July this year. And uh, many countries are also negotiating with um, uh, EU. For example, Turkey has been in negotiation with the EU for many years, but then uh, so, so far not much progress has been made, and therefore I do not see um, that uh, within the near term they, they can become members of the EU. With regard to the development of Euro or the Euro zone in terms of the uh, member states, uh, well, that would be different uh, from the members of the EU because some members are, are members of the EU, but then they do not uh, use the currency e, uh, euro. And at present, we have 18 countries using euro. And the latest um, participant, or rather, at present, we have 17. And the latest uh, uh, newcomer is uh, El Saria, and they just uh, joined last year. And uh, in the coming year, we see that uh, two countries are now negotiating, and there is uh, a very high chance that uh, they would also be using euro as their currency. That's uh, Latvia and uh, and uh, uh, Latvia. And um, actually, for these two countries, when compared to other countries um, in the EU, their economic condition is the best. For example, in 2013, in terms of their GDP growth, we are expecting uh, 3% or more. And uh, if you look at, um, at the overall performance of either EU or the Eurozone um, countries' um, economic growth, actually um, is uh, on average less than 1%. And therefore, for the three uh, small Scandinavian countries, in, uh, in other words, the Baltic Sea countries, in terms of their economic performance, uh, they are doing quite well. Well, the biggest problem facing EU is, uh, as reported in the press, is that uh, national or this or their state debts, and of course, there are uh, there are many disputes. For example, between France and Germany, they are actually uh, they are the uh, more affluent um, economies uh, in the EU, and they can see that if they do not offer help to the other countries, then uh, with regard to the entire EU, there would be serious problems. Since the 2010 emergence of the uh, national debt problems, three countries have asked the EU for bailing out. And these countries are Greece, um, Ireland and uh, Portugal, respectively. And as far as uh, the situation is concerned, uh, in Greece, the situation is still rather bad because despite the fact that uh, they have already got uh, two rounds of uh, bailout from the EU, what well, their objective is that they would be able to cut their deficit uh, to about uh, uh, by about 3% of the GDP, but then well, Greece originally intended uh, to uh, achieve that uh, by 2014, but then uh, apparently that would not be achievable, and they would have to wait until 2016 to achieve that. But then if that's the case, then uh, Germany and uh, France would be very worried, because uh, if the progress um, uh, is slowed down by another two years, then uh, it's possible that in the coming one year or, so, or two, they will have to pump um, more money into Greece before it can turn around, and therefore, this is a big hidden worry. And another country that has received bailout is Ireland. And uh, recently, in Ireland, they have commissioned the EU's commission, and also the um, uh, the European Central Bank, and uh, uh, there is um, a study. And uh, the finding is that. Uh, in Ireland, if you look at their economic 
performance and also um, the uh, progress in terms of cutting the deficit. The progress has been uh, so far so good, and uh, according to um, their estimate, uh, there is a chance that it w might turn around uh, for the better. But then for the third country, uh, Portugal, I think it's very similar to Greece. It's very different from Ireland. They also um, need a lot of money from the EU, but then in Portugal, because their, their e economy is still very weak, because uh, it's in, in its nature that it's a very weak economy, hence, uh, despite uh, a lot of efforts uh, in reducing spending and also increasing sources of revenue, well, all these, because uh, of the nature of its economy that is uh, rather weak, in terms of its economic performance, has not been able to catch up with um, the progress that it has already planned. And in Spain, yes, uh, it has yet to seek help from the EU. Well, Spain is uh, another country that um, people are most worried about. And uh, the local government in Spain are already suffering from huge deficits and they've been asking for help from the central government. And uh, the central government of Spain, for the time being, is still of the view that it should not be getting um, uh, support uh, from the EU. Yes, recently they've offered uh, some uh, 100 billion uh, EU or Euro to uh, Spain, but then the uh, Spanish government views this um, as um, a uh, loan instead of a bail bailout fund. Yes, the Spanish government does not uh, regard this as uh, a bailout fund. It doesn't, um, it's still of the view that uh, its government is not uh, having serious problems and they've also introduced a number of uh, measures in order to cut the deficit but then uh, they have tried to reduce spending and they've also increased the sources of revenue but then their nationals are very unhappy about this. That's why from time to time you would see um, in the press that uh, there, are there are industrial sites and indeed uh, some of the demonstrations uh, have been rather um, uh, violent and they will have to use uh, tear gas and they will also have to use a lot of uh, police uh, officers before they can control the situation and therefore Spain is another uh, big worry in the Eurozone or in Europe. And um, looking forward, uh, the EU will be adopting a number of measures in order to revive the economy other than the fact that uh, they've already uh, launched a $500 billion uh, reserve uh, for uh, bailing out uh, these uh, weaker economies. They've also used uh, some 100 uh, billion uh, euro to stimulate the economy so that uh, that can be spent on different areas of the economy in order to boost the economy. And if uh, Spain, Greeks um, and Portugal are able to stabilize their economy, then as far as the entire situation of uh, Europe is concerned, uh, that would be good. And therefore, Looking ahead, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty and mainly we will have to focus on these economies to see if they are able to make some progress. And in terms of uh, trade, as you have heard just now, in the uh, multilateral talk uh, in the WTO, uh, the progress has been rather slow and therefore in terms of bilateral uh, treaty with uh, South Korea, Japan and uh, Singapore, they are negotiating uh, to reach uh, FTAs and uh, with regard to the FTA with South Korea that has been reached and uh, for the FTA with uh, Singapore, very good progress has been made. And uh, as regards the FTA with Japan recently, they've already started um, their negotiation and they've already obtained uh, the consent from their member states uh, to enter into this uh, FTA with uh, Japan. So, so much for my uh, report. Thank you very much. And then I would like to invite um, our Beijing representative to speak and I would like to urge members uh, on our team to keep their um, reports uh, brief. Um, we have a number of offices, um, the Beijing office, um, Shanghai, Guangdong, Chengdu offices. Um, we cover different regions, uh, northern part, eastern part, southern part, and western parts of China. For the Beijing office, one of our major functions uh, is to enhance liaison and communication between the government of Hong Kong, SARG, and the CPG and the mainland authorities. We are quite concerned about the policies and regulations announced in the mainland. As soon as we get the information, we will report back to the relevant departments in Hong Kong to analyze the impact on our business sector and the business uh, uh, enterprises. And um, we 
I also concerned about the tax uh, policies as well as the labor policies. And for the three uh, ETOs, uh, like the Beijing office, in fact, we have to um, take care of the economic and trade links uh, in our own regions. As to the work carried out by us, we assist the chambers of commerce locally to organize uh, visits as well as uh, negotiation uh, sessions. And from time to time, we would also be disseminating economic and trade news to our business enterprises. Say, for example, for the Guangdong ETO, on a weekly basis, they would uh, issue a newsletter to our um, enterprises. And then for the Guangdong ETO, uh, uh, for the Beijing office, um, other than telling the local businessmen, um, we will also uh, alert the four general chambers of commerce to uh, allow them to prepare early. For enterprises um, from Hong Kong, if they are concerned about anything in relation to the work in the mainland, uh, we will reflect them to the authorities and will take further action. Of course, for our economic and trade promotion, we would like to um, promote investment opportunities. Uh, our four offices have got a unit from the Invest Hong Kong. Um, we will be touring different provinces to explain the investment strengths of Hong Kong. We encourage them to come to Hong Kong to invest, and we also follow up on all the cases for uh, promotion. Uh, this is also one of our important work. Other than the economic and trade uh, aspects, uh, we'll also be emphasizing the cultural and artistic developments in Hong Kong. And we join hands with the Tourism Board as well as the Trade Development Council. For the Beijing office in uh, February next year, we'll be uh, cooperating with the Hong Kong team be in promoting the Hong Kong Arts Festival. For the TDC, um, so from time to time, uh, we join hands to have business seminars. They would be engaged in uh, economic and trade matters. We will also uh, do something likewise. And lastly, for our mainland uh, ETOs, we also um, answer queries from or inquiries from our Hong Kong citizens. And um, whenever appropriate, we provide the assistance uh, requested. Thank you. I'd like to invite our colleague from the Singapore ETO to speak on the uh, work as well as the ASEAN uh, uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to brief you on the latest development among the various Southeast Asian countries. In the past five to ten years, uh, relatively speaking, the political environment is stable and the economic growth is stable. For Malaysia, before April next year, they are going to have a general election. For Indonesia, the presidential election will take place in 2014. Uh, since 2010, uh, for the 10 ASEAN member countries, uh, together they became the second largest trading partner of Hong Kong. In 2010, when compared with 2011, there was a 10% growth in the trade. So you can see that for the ASEAN countries, they are very important uh, to Hong Kong, and the importance on our trade is growing. As a result of the unstable uh, environment, um, the unstable external, external environment of Hong Kong, we see a slight decrease in the trade volume between Hong Kong and other partners, 2% um, down. For Singapore, an increase of 4.9%, but uh, this year the economic growth forecast is 1 to 2%. Uh, for Malaysia, they would expect a 4.5% uh, economic growth. Thailand, last year they suffered from the flooding, and there wasn't much growth, and this year 2.75% being expected. For Indonesia, 6.5% uh, being the economic growth last year, yeah, almost the same for this year. For new markets for Vietnam, Etc. Um, their growth is very rapid, and we have also seen that more and more Hong Kong enterprises are going to the emerging markets to set up factories and to have trade. So the potential for growth is certainly uh, established. And for the Singapore ETO, we have also been looking at the promotion of our um, cultural um, activities. 
um, we have been promoting our film industry as well in addition to music and we have been looking at other emerging uh, markets we are organizing film festivals in April this year in Bangkok um, for the first time we had a Hong Kong fi uh, film festival next year we are going to Jakarta and Ho Chi Minh City um, we would like to attract the overseas Chinese to develop a taste for Hong Kong movies. Uh, in the past, uh, Hong Kong movies used to be more popular in the Southeast Asian countries. I think we need to re, um, resume the momentum. There are two others uh, that I would like to invite them to speak. First of all, the uh, Tokyo um, representative to tell you about the case of Japan and Korea. Um, Mr. Chairman, first of all, about the Japanese government. Just last month, uh, last week, um, for the fourth executive month, the Japanese government has been adjusting downwards the economic growth forecast. For four months in a row, I think this is the first time since the year 2009 when we had the Lehman Brothers incident. This is the first time since then to downwardly adjust the economic growth forecast. In fact, between July and September, there was a, a reduction of 3.5% in the economic growth after analyzing it. Personal consumption, investment, export, manufacturing, etc. have seen a slowing down. Uh, taken everything into account, um, the um, economic def uh, performance is weak. And the Japanese government has announced a number of measures to stimulate the economy. Towards the end of October, the Japanese government referred to a number of economic initiatives uh, measuring 750 billion yen. And the Japanese bank has also increased um, the volume of their plan to sell assets. Uh, an increase of 11 trillion yen. They have also set up a special facility to help the commercial banks to lend money to businesses, hoping that the deflation can be addressed and stimulate the economy. The Japanese uh, bank is still holding a meeting. They want to know if they need to continue with the quantitative easing measure. Other than Japan, I would also like to report on the case, report to you about the case of uh, Korea, South Korea. I think the economy is performing a little bit better than Japan. In the third quarter, their economic growth was 1.6%. Uh, but then this figure uh, was the lowest for the uh, three years in the past. IMF has also downgraded um, the economic forecast for South Korea, 2.7% being forecast only for this year, 3.6%. Uh, but then for South Korea, their own economic analysis is even uh, giving a, is a much lower figure than 3.6%. South Korea, they try to look at the case of U.S., uh, if the U.S. could not address the problem of the fiscal cliff, South Korea expected that uh, its economic growth would be affected. Perhaps it had to take away 0.5%. In other words, they could not achieve an economic growth of 3.6%. Uh, unemployment rate yeah, remains at a low side. Uh, low level, 3.1%. Um, in South Korea, they haven't got deflation. In fact, they have got a slight inflation, about 1.2%. All in all, in the case of uh, South Korea, their economy is a bit more optimistic than that of Tokyo, but then, uh, I mean uh, Japan. But then uh, they're going to have a presidential election in December, we have to wait for the outcome of the election before we can be more certain about the future development. We will be watching very closely. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, lastly, last time we briefed you on the Hong Kong-Taiwan uh, trade relationship. Uh, today we have the uh, director of the Hong Kong Economic Trade and Cultural Office Taiwan, so maybe he can uh, report to you about their work.
Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members. For this Economic Trade and Cultural Office, it was set up in middle of December last year, and in May this year it was officially opened. Uh, we have been operating for a period of time, though less than 12 months. For our work, like other ETOs, um, our work is quite similar to the work of other ETOs. We like to promote the bilateral relationship between Hong Kong and Taiwan in economic and trade exchanges and cooperation. We would like to have more cultural exchanges between the two places. Um, in this week, that is on Friday this week, for the first time we are hosting um, the first Hong Kong week in Taipei. Uh, eight programs and a comic uh, exhibition, as well as a modern Hong Kong movie show. This is quite a large-scale cultural exchange uh, activity. For the latest economic performance of Taiwan, well, Taiwan and Hong Kong have very close economic and trade ties. Uh, the two places are the fourth largest trading partner of each other. And last year, as far as commodities trade was concerned, uh, it was quite good. When compared with 2010, there was an increase of 11%. In terms of surface trade, Taiwan was also our fifth largest trading partner. In 2010, the year-on-year -year growth was 18%. Recently, the economy of Taiwan wasn't performing very satisfactorily. For the first 10 months, um, there were some signs of um, a re uh, slowing down, uh, a drop of 3.7% in trade. For the domestic demand, again, there was a drop of 0.8%. As a result, trade between Hong Kong and Taiwan has seen a drop of 3% in the total volume. Unemployment rate. Taiwan has a slightly higher unemployment rate, the latest figure being 4.32%. Uh, of course, Taiwan uh, has got certain measures from the government to uh, drive the economic growth, but it appears that in the short term they are not quite effective, and therefore the government's popularity rating has been affected. Will it the authority itself or the other analysis, it is said that there will be some recovery in the economy next year. Now, for the time being, I think there will be an, uh, a growth rate of more than 3%. All right, thank you. Uh, we have got representatives from other uh, offices uh, present, but I would rather uh, leave time for members to ask questions. Uh, if necessary, I will invite the directors to speak again. Seven members have put down their names to ask questions, so four minutes each. Five minutes? Sorry, speakers are off mic. Uh, I read out the names. Jeffrey Lam, Andrew Leung, Ma Fung Kwok, Emily Lau, Dennis Kwok and Wong Ting Kwong. And Jiang Hai Wan and Lo Wai Guang will be speaking in that order, and Mr. Liu Chang Kong as well. All right, Mr. Jeffrey Lam first. Four minutes because we have a few more members wishing to speak. Uh, sorry, speaker is off mic. Uh, please switch on the mic. Uh, press the red button. Request to speak. Chairman, with regard to the officials uh, of our ETO. They have promoted uh, trade and uh, they are trying to attract um, investors uh, to come to Hong Kong and uh, the assistance that they have rendered to Hong Kong residents uh, in those countries. I'd like to express my appreciation and admiration for their work. Just now we've been told uh, the local economic conditions. Uh, apparently they are not very promising. Other than the fact that um, in the external economy, uh, most of the countries are actually experiencing a slowdown in their economy. 
Uh, despite that, uh, our country has maintained a steady economic growth, and in recent years, our country has also been developing um, a consumption that uh, economy. And as a result, uh, the international community is also looking at uh, the developments um, on the mainland. And this year, we have introduced um, a $1 billion dedicated fund to help the SMEs uh, to go into the mainland market. So I'd like to ask um, this, uh, I'll put this uh, to the mainland ETO's um, representatives. What measures have been adopted? Um, including working with the TDC in assisting the e T e uh, SMEs in promoting trade uh, on the mainland. And also, as you can see, uh, the U.S. and uh, e European economies are not doing well, and therefore um, many SMEs are concerned whether or not there would be um, a reemergence of um, uh, protectionism in these countries. For example, um, in the U.S., uh, there was uh, this uh, 301 or the new 3 or 300, and they're very concerned whether or not they might be reintroducing this in the coming year. And um, so, where necessary, we will have to come up with some preparation. And then for emerging economies, uh, will there be more ETOs set up in these new economies? So I'd like to put this to the Permanent Secretary, because uh, for um, emerging markets, uh, they have a tremendous potential, and therefore we'll have to tap those uh, resources. Yes, I'll ask uh, two colleagues to, to help. So I'll name them uh, well, for the ETOs. Yes, I will be reviewing that uh, from time to time, but then establishing new ETOs in the new emerging markets uh, would also involve um, very substantial government spending and investment. And as I said, uh, in Southeast Asia, we will also be increasing the number of um, ETOs um, in um, ASEAN. So, with regard to the $1 billion dedicated uh, fund for upgrading and also um, restructuring, so I'd like to ask the Chengdu office to tell us more about uh, the support that we have rendered to the SMEs in promoting their work. And then I'll also ask my uh, colleague to say uh, a few words on the protectionism um, in the U.S. Yes, uh, Chengdu representative, yes, thank you for your question. Well, uh, taking Chengdu as an example, with regard to the measures that we have introduced to help the SMEs, what are they? Well, earlier this year, we have worked out with the um, uh, the uh, Federation of Hong Kong Industries, uh, and we have organized a Hong Kong week there. And uh, the purpose is um, twofold. Number one, we help these uh, SMEs uh, to promote their brands in Chengdu, and we also help them to uh, develop uh, some channels uh, for um, uh, distribution on the mainland, and uh, we work with the um, ETO and also the uh, TDC, and uh, we organize a week of um, Hong Kong week, and uh, the effect has been quite good. So that's one of the examples. And also for um, uh, transfer of um, enterprises, well, well, for example, the uh, Federation of uh, Hong Kong Industries have um, uh, I put its eyes uh, on uh, Shenzhou in Hunan, and uh, through uh, the government, uh, we have also uh, done some pioneering, pioneering work. We have also gained some understanding of the market, and we have also um, uh, obtained some information for attracting uh, foreign investors and so on, and we have passed it on to them. Then. Um, can we be told more about uh, the protectionism in the U.S.? Well, for protectionism in the U.S., well, indeed, for Hong Kong exports uh, to the U.S., uh, the uh, volume has come down. That's because uh, they have uh, um, reduced uh, spending. And in terms of protectionism in the U.S., we've been watching that very closely. And I hope that uh, this is um, um, a piece of good news. That is uh, for the... Um, for the uh, parliamentary committee responsible for um, trade, uh, but most of them are free traders, so they are not in favor of our protectionism. So the chairman has been um, a free trader, and we would also be doing a lot of lobbying work uh, with the parliaments and uh, Hong Kong uh, being a free trade economy. And, and I think our reputation has been rather good, and so we are uh, prudently optimistic about this. Next, uh, Mr. Andrew Leung. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I have two questions. They are very simple. First of all, Linda, you said that um, in Europe, uh, 
um, you're actually starting to negotiate free trade agreements uh, with other economies. So with regard to the chance of Hong Kong reaching such an, uh, uh, such an agreement with them, uh, how high is that chance? And also uh, the European economy is not doing well. And therefore for the 20 plus uh, countries in the EU, are there any bright spots that we should um, uh, take a look and knock on their doors to see if we can do trade with them. And um, another point is, uh, well, in Singapore, you can see that ASEAN, in ASEAN, we are the uh, second largest, um, is, uh, the ASEAN is our second largest uh, trade partner. So are there any bright spots where we can work on, in particular, to help the SMEs uh, to enter this uh, very large market? Linda? Well, FTA, or Free Trade Agreement, if we want to um, get a partner to negotiate and strike a deal with them, basically it's difficult because um, as um, a trading place, we already do not impose uh, any restrictions whatsoever. So whether it's uh, the EU or other uh, uh, trade jurisdictions uh, to uh, start such a negotiation would not be easy. And also for the EU, we have also talked to our counterparts there. And basically, um, they are not very interested in starting a negotiation with Hong Kong in, in order to reach um, an FTA. So basically, that's the stance of most um, economies in the EU. And also, uh, you ask whether there are bright spots in the EU despite its current economic situation. And out of the 20 plus uh, countries in the EU, several economies, for example, um, Latvia and also Lithuania, uh, they are doing quite well. And uh, they are also looking uh, to um, a growth of over 3% in the coming year, but then uh, their markets are relatively small. So even though they have uh, economic growth, their market volume or size um, is rather small. And also their domestic demand um, is also rather weak, and therefore it's difficult to sell goods to them. But then is that the chance to invest in these economies? Well, the Hong Kong business sector might wish, might wish to take a look because they are actually actively identifying partners uh, so that they can work together to do business. So this is something that they, they might wish to look into. Next, um, yes, thank you, Mr. Lam, for your question with regard to ASEAN's development. Well, what we have seen is that in recent years, they have been developing rather steadily. And in some countries, uh, they sh they are worth mentioning. And of course, uh, with regard to their trade uh, with Singapore, is rather active. And, and we are both the fifth largest uh, trade partner. And we can see that uh, some Hong Kong companies are actually making use of Singapore as a springboard uh, to develop um, 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 markets in ASEAN. And uh, that's been happening. And we will also be assisting these companies uh, to pave the way for their establishing companies or stronghold there. And also, there are markets that have uh, tremendous potential, and uh, Indonesia is one, one of those. And actually, um, the population in Indonesia is accounting for some 40% of the total population, while ASEAN has about uh, uh, six uh, billion uh, people. And um, uh, Indonesia alone has already accounted for some 40%, and uh, their economy has been doing quite well. And uh, in terms of the uh, size of the middle class population, is also increasing, and therefore Indonesia might be one of the places where the SMEs might be interested. And in March this year, um, the TDC and the Guangdong provincial government have organized a lifestyle taste um, expo in order to promote Hong Kong companies and Hong Kong brands and also Hong Kong products are to these places. And uh, similar events will also be held later. So whether it's the TDC or other uh, co uh, 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 chambers of commerce, uh, they've been to Cambodia, Indonesia, and even Myanmar to see if there are business opportunities. And uh, the ETO also has a role to play in all these uh, activities. Next, uh, Mr. Ma Bong Kwok. Thank you. Chairman, I still remember about 10 years ago when I was st also a member, I also called upon these uh, ETOs uh, to play uh, the role of um, an arts and cultural promoter. And uh, coming back to this council, I'm pleased to see that in each and every one of these reports, uh, they often talk about uh, arts and cultural activities, and they've also been very active in promoting such activities. And this is something that I'd like to uh, commend the government for making the efforts uh, in doing that. Yes, uh, we have been able to 
uh, organize these activities, and uh, we have also been able to uh, have some Hong Kong presence uh, in the local activities, and we have also introduced some new projects, but then uh, the number is not large. So I have several questions. I'd like to know that uh, whether these uh, activities have received very good response uh, locally. Uh, and I think uh, they've been well received, but then I still would like to get more information. And also with regard to the demand for the assistance uh, or the demand for the ETOs in terms of manpower and also resources, uh, uh, has that um, uh, imposed um, any burden on the ETOs? So uh, I'd like to know more. And the third question is, well, uh, for the uh, Taiwanese, uh, uh, well, the HKETCO, uh, well, I understand that for this office, it also has a cultural role to play. So I'd like to know, well, f um, have you considered this um, inappropriate uh, locations? Uh, some of the ETOs can also be given a very uh, clear cultural mission. I'm not referring to each and every one of them. For example, in the U.S., uh, in the EU, uh, or in the mainland. The reason why I'm making this suggestion is, well, in doing this, we will have to have an overall planning. We also have to be proactive. It's not just uh, about uh, responding to the demand or requests uh, from the local government. Uh, we should uh, have a strategy in promoting this. So these are the three questions that I'd like to ask. Thank you. Who would like to respond to this? Well, Chairman, I'll try to um, answer the question raised by Mr. Ma. Yes, sir. in the past, uh, whether we are talking about the mainland offices or overseas offices, yes, we have also increased uh, the role that they play in promoting cultural activities. Uh, not all of them have been a response to the request by the local government because we would like to um, uh, brand name Hong Kong. Other than creating a conducive business environment, we've been talking about Hong Kong lifestyle and Hong Kong strengths and culture is also one of our strengths. And therefore, when our ETOs or mainland uh, ETOs, when they take the initiative to uh, bring some uh, quality Hong Kong performance uh, groups uh, to the places that they are located uh, to stage performances, that's also one of the purposes. And also for economic activities, yes, uh, we would not say that uh, because they have increased uh, such activities and therefore we will have to increase the manpower for such offices. But then in promoting Hong Kong, that's basically one of the basic missions of these uh, ETOs. As regards whether or not they have encountered any difficulties, actually when I talk to the person in charge of these ETOs, we do understand that um, well, we do have many performance uh, groups. Their resources are limited. And uh, for these performing groups, if we invite them to go overseas to stage any performances, then they will also have to uh, use a lot more manpower. And therefore, in terms of uh, government sponsorship and uh, subvention, that would be rather demanding. But then every year, uh, when the officers uh, from these um, uh, ETOs uh, come back to Hong Kong to report their work, we will be talking to the HAB in terms of how we can promote uh, uh, Hong Kong's uh, culture and arts overseas. Well, because after all, it's the HAB which is responsible for arts and culture. And therefore, every year when they come back to report their work to us, we will also talk to the HAB to see if um, there is anything that the HAB would like us to help out. And uh, that would also be incorporated into our uh, business plan for the coming year. There are two questions that have not been answered. One is about uh, the response, and the other is uh, about whether or not you'll be upgrading some of these offices so that they can also include uh, the word uh, culture in the office. Mr. Chairman, if you permit, I will give a quick reply as to the title of the offices. Well, um, sometimes um, the names are provided for in the legislation. I don't think the name itself is uh, too significant. I think what is important is the work of the ETOs. In fact, they do regard cultural promotion as part of daily work. As to the response to our promotional activities, yes, of course, uh, for the Hong Kong film festivals, usually um, they are popular because we're able to uh, bring new movies to the host countries. As to the performing arts, it all depends on the programs delivered. But generally speaking, the response is positive. Thank you, Piers. Emily Lau. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, please press the button. I'd like to welcome the various officials to come home. Uh, it's better if in future with more time for more questions. Uh, 
um, I understand that they you there will be a reception on Friday. I had originally put down my name to go, but then we're going to have an eight-hour FC meeting, so I can't go. So just remember me when you are having a drink. I hope the overseas um, offices can understand that um, when we have a new term of LegCo, we would like to have overseas duty visits. And uh, we used to go to the various uh, cities, and I hope that the ETOs would cooperate with our secretariat, make arrangements, and make preparation for our overseas trip, and recommend names to us. Sometimes we don't go overseas, but we'll be interested to look at the overseas experience for reference. So please uh, bear this in mind. I hope that uh, we won't be holding up too much of, of your work, but please assist us in our um, information gathering exercise. Now, a question for Tokyo. Uh, Ms. Wong, I understand that everybody is aware of the tension uh, between China and Japan. I want to know whether it has affected the exchanges between Hong Kong and Tokyo. Um, cultural activities, tourism groups, etc. I want to know whether the Japanese um, dislike uh, Chinese, including Hong Kong Earth. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Lau, for your question. Well, uh, we have been affected to one extent or other. For the month of September, we have seen a drop of 9%. And for October, we haven't got the figures yet. There's in relation to the number of Japanese arrivals in Hong Kong. According to our tourism board, and they do have a representative in Tokyo, and they have close liaison with the tourism industry there, they find out that uh, for Japanese businessmen and Japanese tourists, uh, some of them might have already booked their flights, but eventually they've cancelled uh, the trip. Uh, for investors and for frequent business travelers, they are aware of the situation in Hong Kong and they haven't been affected. They understand that Hong Kong and the mainland are not the same and we have one country, two systems. So they can still come to Hong Kong to do business uh, safely. They do need to worry. But still, we need to explain to those that aren't as familiar uh, with Hong Kong as those others. We need to explain to them that in Hong Kong, life goes on in a normal way, and they can come at any time, and they can um, just um, come to Hong Kong in accordance with their business plan or their holiday plans. Um, what about our Tokyo office? Uh, do they contact the Japanese media so that uh, we can send out a positive message to the Japanese community? Mr. Chairman, we are thinking of different ways to do it. Working through the media will be one of the methods, but probably not in the form of a press conference. It may not be um, acceptable. On the contrary, maybe we can have some sponsored visits. Uh, we can uh, sponsor some uh, people from the tourism industry so that they will come to Hong Kong to have a look and then they will go back to Japan and then for intended travelers they will have a better idea and they can also uh, make use of the social media uh, to write about their personal experience and then that will be more convincing. And of course uh, we can have promotional work, we can have uh, business seminars and on the spot, we will be talking to the participants so that they know about the case of Hong Kong and they don't need to worry. So we're working on different fronts. Thank you. Next, Mr. Dennis Kwok. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Annan Leung and myself, in the year 2011, month of July, we went to the Washington office and we had the opportunity to learn from Mr. Tong as to their work. And then for the report by the Toronto office, mention is made about the um, promotion of one country, two systems, as well as the basic law. Of course, uh, we know that the rule of law and the legal profession are aware of the importance to promote the economic and trade ties. 
uh, between Hong Kong and overseas countries. Now, for the Toronto office work, uh, it's aimed at the Chinese community there. Uh, I want to know whether you have promoted um, the rule of law in Hong Kong facing the legal profession in your host country. So I want to know about that. Yes, P.S. I think individual officers uh, have their promotion in this regard, but I don't want to invite each and every one of them to speak. Maybe the U.S. representative, uh, I mean the representative in the U.S. office can comment on broadly what we have been doing in this regard. Promotion of one country, two systems is certainly one of the tasks of each office. In Washington, when we go to the um, Congress and when we go to the federal offices, in fact, we've been touring around all the time, we will certainly bear this in mind. The media, the think tanks, and even when we give talks at universities, we certainly uh, incorporate such a message for the legal profession. In Hong Kong, we have the Hong Kong Arbitration Center. It presents fresh business opportunities. There may be overseas friends who are involved in commercial uh, certain disputes in the mainland. They would like to have arbitration, and we suggest to them that they can bring their case to Hong Kong, even though the case itself has nothing to do with Hong Kong. So we have been promoting um, this aspect. One country, two systems is certainly one of the important messages of our work. Mr. Wang Ting Kuang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome home. Um, a question for the Guangdong ETO. I think Guangdong ETO is the first and only ETO with immigration officers stationed. Um, in Guangdong, we have the largest number of Hong Kong businessmen making investments there. I want to know about the picture of Hong Kong businessmen encountering difficulties on the mainland. And then a question for Mr. Leung. Um, you are in charge of the um, new office in Taiwan. I want to know if you have encountered any difficulties. So two questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Ellen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Member, for your question. For the Guangdong ETO, we have got an immigration unit. On a yearly basis, they got 200 to 300 inquiries. Most of them are involved in traffic incidents or accidents. They encountered difficulties. They lost their travel documents, um, family members falling sick or uh, passing away, asking us for help for the businesses. We have the economic and trade unit that oversees such matters. We have dozens of uh, requests for assistance. They may encounter difficulties in the transformation upgrading, and they, more, they may encounter difficulties in land and property, or they want to stay put, but they have difficulties. We try our best to uh, render assistance and to reflect their opinion. Mr. Chairman, for Mr. Wang Ting Kuang's question, we have had about 11 months operation. Generally speaking, our work has been smooth uh, in Taiwan, be it the business sector, cultural sector, the academia. I think um, the majority of them have a positive image of Hong Kong, and they also have uh, dealings with Hong Kong. They know Hong Kong, but still there is a lot of work to cover. In Taiwan, they have got many different cities and um, um, counties. So in the future, we are going to more places to um, meet with them and to visit them. And then in the beginning, we of course must um, um, be on a learning curve. And in the beginning, we aren't too clear about the uh, legal setup. And so when Hong Kong citizens encounter difficulties or get involved in accidents, uh, it has taken us some time to work through the legal advices to understand the laws and regulations uh, involved. 
happen after the initial period. I think we have become more familiar with the domestic rules and regulations. And so, relatively speaking, I think uh, the operation is getting smoother. Thank you. Next, uh, Deputy Chair, Ms. Anna Chang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yesterday, I read the papers. I w was quite puzzled. I asked myself as to what the ETOs were involved in. It seems that they were quite lopsided uh, towards the cultural scene. A lot of um, cultural activities, and then you emphasize the wine and dine festival, for example. I thought uh, it seems that you are taking over the work of the Home Affairs Bureau. And then I read the appendix, appendix 1, say for example. But you don't have culture as part of your terms of reference, other than the Taiwan office. It seems that the other offices haven't got culture uh, as part of your terms of reference. Mr. Ma Fong Kwok is wondering whether you should add culture to the title of your office. It seems that you are overemphasizing the cultural aspect. So if the title of the office is not the same as the nature of the work, it is a bit odd. So I have this request to make. I'm from the business sector. I understand that the businessmen have certain expectations of the ETO's work. And it is a very simple one. Just recently, I mean just now, you have given us an analysis of the broad picture. In fact, I can get the information by reading up the time, business week, etc. But I want you to give the details to the business sector. What I would expect from you would be like the following. Say, promoting the investment opportunities in Hong Kong, like the six industries that Hong Kong has an advantage. I think um, I'm glad to learn from the Washington office that uh, Hong Kong has set up an arbitration center and will be promoting our arbitration service. But what about the six industries that we have an advantage? And what about logistics? It seems that um, people in Hong Kong have forgotten it. But then the ETOs, on the contrary, have been working on this. Businessmen also want to know more details, say, for example, the markets. You are stationed in overseas cities, and probably you know more about the overseas markets. Um, we, we need the information. We want to know more about the market. Maybe we're exporting goods to them. We may, maybe we want to go there to invest. So we want to get more information. And then what about the emphasis of your work next year? What are the focal points? I think we need to be clear as to whether we still want to promote logistics industry. And what about the six industries? And what about the new policies of our new CE? Uh, you haven't got time left for them to give a reply. Sorry about that. Please uh, give give him extra time, otherwise it's unfair to him. Fab. Chairman, I'll try to answer the question as well. Whether it's a culture, um, creative um, industry, or even uh, wine and dine, it's also um, our industries, and therefore in promoting uh, wine in recent years after the um, reduction in, the, uh, in wine duty in terms of the um, development of the sector, uh, there have been tremendous opportunities, and also during the past uh, few years or so, our individual ETOs have been um, organizing trade fairs uh, and other promotional activities. Many of them have been 
done in the past uh, and uh, with regard to our pillar industries and also our industries uh, with advantages, for example, uh, our Beijing ETOs have also had contacts with overseas um, educational institutions That's because we would also like to promote our education sector and also for our R&D development uh, through our ETOs. In particular, through their um, business um, investment units, we have also um, introduced uh, some investors to Hong Kong. So that's uh, very much part and parcel of their daily work. With regard to the external um, economic environment, well, after all, we are a government office set up locally, and we basically liaise with the business leaders and also the local governments. And also, for the detailed information about the market and uh, the market conditions, actually, we do rely heavily on the TDC, which is uh, looking at the individual markets, and they would also conduct market assessments and uh, studies. So to a certain extent, uh, we have to have this division of labor, or else our ETOs, um, well, our staff will basically be responsible for liaising with the local authorities. And uh, for uh, trade-related uh, studies, uh, we basically rely on the TDC. I, I hope that uh, you can tell us your highlights uh, for the coming year. Yes, I understand that uh, the ETO will be doing a lot of uh, work. And uh, despite the fact that you do not have a lot of manpower, well, I do understand that you do have a lot of tasks. But then can you give us your highlights? So what are the highlights for the coming year? Sorry, uh, you've already overrun on your time. Next, uh, Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. Just now, the... Um, Singapore, uh, the Singapore ETO representative has told us about um, uh, the work it has done in promoting uh, Hong Kong in amongst the ASEAN market, or well, in uh, lobbying the ASEAN so that uh, China can participate. Um, so, when do you expect to see results? And also, many Hong Kong business would also be interested uh, in investing in these emerging markets. And as we have been told in the reports, well, uh, well in some of these markets, uh, uh, you might have seen very uh, drastic growth because of the base, because of the low base figures. And also, if there are many Hong Kong businessmen who are interested in a particular market, it, and if they want to invest in such markets, then is there a possibility for us to set up a Hong Kong park there so that we can um, gather together all the forces uh, from Hong Kong? And these businessmen can also uh, complement one another. They can also render assistance to one another. It's like what Singapore did uh, in Suzhou. They have set up a Singapore park, and it was uh, quite uh, a bright spot. So would we be making a similar recommendation, or what's your estimate on the feasibility or viability of such a park? Which market um, is more attractive uh, where it's possible for us to set up a Hong Kong park there? Which is now our Singaporean representative told us about um, Hong Kong joining the uh, China and ASEAN FTA. We have only uh, just started the work. And as you might have heard, well, in August last year, um, Vice Premier Li Keqiang, when he visited Hong Kong, he also said that uh, the central authorities would support Hong Kong in joining um, the states and also some um, FTAs uh, signed between uh, China and uh, uh, other Asian countries. And um, our uh, the state authorities have also assisted us in doing that, and um, our Singaporean ETO has also been helping us in doing some lobbying work and also uh, liaison work. But then uh, uh, it might take uh, a bit more time because some countries are involved, and uh, we cannot expect to achieve it overnight. But then uh, we do take it as a very urgent matter. We hope that uh, we can start the process as soon as possible. And um, as far as our 
uh, request is concerned, we have already submitted that uh, to the ASEAN Secretariat, and uh, it depends on the progress of our lobbying work in the next uh, few months. And also, we have also received requests from Chambers of Commerce asking the government to provide assistance so that um, in some emerging markets in Southeast Asia, we can organize um, uh, venues um, and uh, opportunities for Hong Kong investors to invest uh, in those countries. And we are looking at uh, what role can be played by ETOs and also the government. Because we have not uh, made we have not done this before. We have not um, uh, asked. Um, we have not um, ne negotiated with overseas governments as regards whether it's uh, feasible to set up a Hong Kong park there, and and uh, to have it done or initiated uh, by the Hong Kong government. That has been that has never been done before. But then we will be um, uh, looking at the potential of uh, individual places, and that will be the first step that we are taking. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Martin Yell. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I'm not from the business sector, but I would still like to ask some questions uh, that the business sector is concerned about. Well, I'm interested um, in Europe because I don't believe in uh, because I don't think the uh, Republicans and the Democrats uh, will be able to reach a consensus um, uh, on the fiscal cliff, and uh, therefore they will have to print more notes, and and uh, quantitative t quantitative easing will continue. Well, on my concerns about Europe, well, in the eurozone, uh, apparently they are going to form a fiscal union, and that's been promoted uh, by Germany. And uh, we know that uh, without such a fiscal union, if they only have this monetary union, then the eurozone or euro as a currency uh, will be doomed, and uh, the prospect is very gloomy. So what is your um, view on the fiscal union? Um, do you think it will succeed? And also, since the emergence of the European debt crisis, well, my, my personal view is that uh, in many countries in Europe, they will be moving towards um, more socialistic societies. So I'd like to raise this with the um, EU ETO. Well, you stay there and uh, you live there. So do you think that's a trend? And the second question is about Geneva. Just now, all right, you're going to uh, renegotiate the dispute settlement uh, understanding. So in the renegotiation process, would you include um, monitoring the abuse of uh, anti-dumping and also um, anti-government subsidy? So actually, these are initiatives uh, for the implementation of uh, trade uh, protectionism. So have you noticed this trend? And uh, third, well, three years ago, um, well, I've already made a suggestion with our state authorities. That is, we will have to greatly promote the developments in the newly emerging markets because um, at the time we had um, this difficulty. But then I'd like to know how come our ETOs are only located in developed cities and in, and in developed economies? Why have we not have promoted our business uh, in the emerging markets or emerging economies? Well, I'll answer the last question uh, first, and then I'll... Um, ask our uh, EU representative or the, our, our Ber Berlin representative to talk about the fiscal union. Well, yes, for emerging markets, we have done a lot of work, but then we do not have ETOs uh, per se. For example, um, we uh, our EU uh, or our European ETO would also be looking after Turkey. For example, our London office would also be going to uh, Russia, and that's also one of the emerging markets. And also. Through our Hong Kong colleagues, we have uh, visited uh, India, and uh, through our U.S. Uh, uh, office, we have also done some work uh, in Latin America. So we have done this well, type of work. But then, uh, does that warrant uh, the establishment of uh, a new ETO? This is quite uh, a massive investment. That's why we will have to be more careful. So I'll ask our Berlin representative to tell us more about uh, the development in Europe, about the fiscal union. Yes, sir, thank you. What you refer to the fiscal union is quite a complex um, subject. 
But then, as we have seen during the past year or so, uh, in, in terms of the discussion in the EU, some progress has been made. Uh, first of all, with regard to the 17 uh, Eurozone countries, uh, they've agreed that um, in their constitution there would be some policy statements. For example, for national data, uh, uh, that would be brought. Uh, 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 that would be kept uh, by a particular percentage of the GDP, and uh, for the for these um, euro so, uh, euro zone countries, they've already introduced such terms or such provisions uh, in their constitution, and uh, they're also talking about uh, setting up a banking union so that there will be a uniform body which will be responsible for monitoring the operation of the central banks in different um, member states. And they've also got this timetable, hoping that within 2013, they'll be able to introduce or roll out this policy. And of course, some of the details are being worked out or ironed out in Brussels. But then, as we can see, some progress has been made. And at the same time, as our EU representative has said, well, for the 500 billion uh, yeah, euro uh, stabilization fund, uh, well, as uh, some of the other support measures are in place, and uh, it has just uh, been rolled out. And also, Mr. Liao also asked about uh, the situation in Europe, whether socialism would emerge again. Well. Let me briefly um, tell you more about uh, the situation in Germany, because in September uh, they're going to have another election, and for the ruling party is uh, the um, Protestant uh, coalition, and uh, and uh, basically is a coalition government, and uh, is um, a, a central uh, rightist uh, government, and uh, the support rate or the popularity rating is quite high, because uh, in terms of um, the um, the German government's uh, handling of the European crisis, uh, it has been recognized. Uh, but then as regards uh, what's going to happen between now and September next year, of course, there are a lot of uncertainties. And of course, one of the main subjects is um, how the uh, EU is going to deal with the European crisis uh, or debt crisis. And also between now and uh, the general election um, in September next year, uh, this is one of the major factors. Both the anti-dumping uh, agreement and the subsidies and countervailing agreement are already covered under the dispute settlement mechanism, and indeed many cases brought uh, are in relation to those uh, agreements, uh, so they are covered. Um, there are negotiations in theory going on to improve the rules in those two areas in anti-dumping and subsidies and countervailing measures, unfortunately, and we're very active in those negotiations, but unfortunately they're not making much headway. Thank you. Um, Enjoy. Next time, Mr. Mo Mr. Uh, Charles Mock, Chairman. Actually, um, I've got similar questions uh, to those uh, asked by the Deputy Chairman because uh, sometimes when you look at our ETOs, when you look at um, overseas uh, ETOs uh, set up in Hong Kong, I think uh, their duties are very different. For example, for overseas uh, ETOs, uh, when they come to Hong Kong, they know the people in different sectors uh, in Hong Kong, and they also know what are the uh, biggest uh, opportunities, for example, the uh, projects uh, up for bidding, and they will also be doing a lot of um, uh, work. For example, they would also be introducing uh, uh, Canadian or Australian companies, and they would also invite us to consider whether we can uh, work with them on these projects. And of course, I understand that our ETOs uh, would be doing some um, high-level analysis, and they would also try to um, uh, uh, strike uh, deals um, and treaties with overseas authorities. But then uh, there are indeed uh, some strengths of Hong Kong. In particular, the service industry or service sector would need more support. And for the manufacturing sector, well, so long as they can um, uh, attend uh, the uh, functions organized by the TDC, that will be okay. So in these areas, uh, will you be able to work a bit more so that uh, you can link up uh, the chambers of commerce uh, between the two places in particular for infrastructural projects on, and also uh, bidding projects? Uh, if Hong Kong has uh, an edge in some of these areas, for example, for our smart ID cards, if Hong Kong has done a remarkable job, and if you notice that uh, in some of the cities in Europe, if they are also introducing similar smart cards, then you can also introduce us to them so that we can also take part in those uh, bidding and um, functions. So you can liaise um, or coordinate with the TDC, but then I hope that you will do more in this uh, respect. 
Chairman, I've heard the views are from um, the member, and to a certain extent we have done that in the past, but then I agree. In the past, we might not have done as much as you might have wished. For example, for smart ID cards, uh, we have also introduced this technology to different uh, governments, and we have also um, uh, received uh, many uh, government delegations which are interested uh, in this uh, to Hong Kong, but then we will see if we can do it in a more focused manner, and we can also provide uh, a platform for disseminating the information to the relevant sectors. Permanent Secretary, I think you have given a encouraging note. Say, for example, uh, even President Obama is attaching a lot of importance to ASEAN. Uh, in Singapore, we have an office to take care of the ASEAN countries. Um, so I want to know if our manufacturing industry can be given some assistance, since some of them are interested in the uh, other countries like Myanmar and other. Uh, if, even if you do set up a dedicated office, can you not sort of uh, expand the Singaporean office so as to get more information for the Hong Kong businessmen? Because in the coming years, probably the ASEAN countries will become important. Uh, even uh, President Obama has made the has made it the first uh, destination. So I'm going to set aside more resources, Mr. Chairman. Of course, we'll be watching the development, and we will revise our uh, priorities in accordance with our trade and economic work. Uh, the number of ETOs may not be numerous, but then they do uh, cover a lot of areas. Uh, we have got um, over 10 employees at the ETO in Singapore. They take care of 10 countries, uh, but only three of them are from Hong Kong. In the case of USA, um, one in, in charge of the eastern side, the other western side, and they have to take care of uh, a large number of states. So our uh, colleagues uh, have been working very hard touring around because they have to uh, take care of so many different places. It is no easy task. Mr. Chairman, as you have said, uh, we have just uh, had a word with the Singaporean office. Uh, we are going to provide more resources to the Singaporean office uh, in the light of the latest developments from the ASEAN countries. Thank you. Once again, I would like to thank you all for your attendance. Um, you invite us to go to your reception on Friday. It will be difficult for us to attend, but uh, as uh, Emily has said, we very much would like to have more communication with you. Thank you. Thank you.